Hi everybody and welcome to the Craft Studio. My name is Nick and I am a senior dream curator here at the American Family Insurance Dream Bank. Now if you're curious about Dream Bank or why an insurance company might do something like this, well insurance is something that we view as protecting your dreams. We'll protect your dreams, we'll restore your dreams. Those are things that you worked hard for, like your house, your car, you know, think of things like that. However, we also want to be inspirational. We want to help inspire those dreams. That's why we have all of our free events and free resources here at the Dream Bank to help inspire you, to help you get past those perceived roadblocks. Maybe you're on your journey to buying a house. You're going to start a new career. You want to start a family. Maybe you just want to be more creative and try a new craft. That could lead to a side business, a side hustle, an Etsy store, things like that. So that's why I am here, to help show you new crafts, new ways to be creative, practice creativity. It is a very healthy thing for you to do. It's great for your mental health, and that creativity will seep into other areas of your life. You'll find that you're better at creative problem solving, that you'll have you know more downtime and meditative time and things like that. So thank you so much for being here today. We are actually going to be making some really cool accessories for fairy gardens. These are super cheap, super simple. Uh, so they check all my boxes, and I'm actually kind of like obsessed with miniatures for some reason. I just think they're really cool, and I really enjoy making them. So we'll go over the supplies, we'll go over the techniques. I think you're going to really enjoy this one. They're very effective. So thank you so much for being here, and we will get started. All right, so first let me show you what we're going to kind of go over today. So one thing that I really enjoy making that I think are very effective are doors. And doors are a really nice addition of Fairy Garden. You can even just put them like in front of a tree or you know on like a branch or something like that and they look like there's a little gateway to like a magical world there. So I really enjoy making these. Um, fences. So I think fences are a really nice thing to make as well. They add a really nice touch, a nice enclosure around your Fairy Garden. You can make a gate. Um, you're gonna see with a lot of these techniques you know, yeah, we're going to make a door, we're going to make a fence, but really your imagination can just go crazy here. You can make all sorts of things uh, once you know these techniques to put this stuff together. And then other accessories like this. So this is like a little mushroom um, made out of polymer clay. So this is just sort of sculpted by hand. I'll show you how I made that. And again, you know, this is a technique that you can use to make all sorts of different things. Um, different accessories and pieces for your fairy garden. So that's going to be the, the basics of what we're going to make today. So I'll put these things aside for now. And I'll go over the supply. So we do have a lot of different kinds of wooden sticks. Okay, so one thing that I really enjoy using are these wooden stir sticks. They're flat, um, they're pretty thin, so they're easy to cut. Uh, and they're extraordinarily cheap. You can get like a box of a thousand of these for like dollars, like, I don't know, very, very, very cheap, and you'll have plenty to play with. So these are an awesome craft supply. If you have know somebody who's maybe getting rid of something like this, or you see them at a garage sale, or even just a store, snag these. Okay. I also have a uh, flat toothpick. So these are toothpicks. You can see they're sort of rounded on one end there. Um, and then they're pointy on the other end and These are made for like hors d'oeuvres or things like that. So again another food service item Similar to the stir stick. So these are really cheap. You can also buy them by like the thousand in a box And I would recommend doing that I've got popsicle sticks. Everybody knows and loves these. These are the big old tongue depressor ones You know kind of reminds you of the doctor's office. We've got your classic ones here um, you know, like you would find inside of a popsicle. So I got these from a craft store. They're usually in like a kid's craft section next to like felt and foam and feathers and googly eyes and things like that. All right. So in addition to that, we've got a few ways to color what we make. So I've got uh, a distress ink and that's actually what I used on this door. So you can see how it has that, uh, you can still see the wood through it a little bit but it's been tinted. It no longer looks just like a bright popsicle stick or anything. Uh, we've got paints. So I've got some acrylic paint back here. Brown, you know, to, to look like wood. A couple greens for, you know, growth, leaves, grass, stuff like that. And if you wanted to paint flowers, I have a yellow and a pink here, which I thought would look nice. 
I also have a wax stain. So this is a wood stain. Um, and you can find this in the craft store as well, usually near the acrylic paint. And it's something that you would spread on and wipe off and it would have a similar effect uh, to something like this where it would stain the wood a color. Once you wipe it off and it dries, you can kind of buff it too. Sometimes you can buff it to a sheen uh, because it is wax. So that is uh, a nice option for that. And then I've got a couple paint brushes, you know, to apply my paint with if I want to choose to do that. Uh, I've got scissors, which we will need. Uh, I do have a glue, so I'll talk about this real quick. This is called Fabrifix. And Fabrifix, uh, you'll also see a very similar product, maybe called Fabri-Tac, is for sale in craft stores. It's actually usually in the fabric section or the glue section. And it is typically made to bind fabric to fabric. Um, but I use it to bind fabric to paper, paper to paper, um, all sorts of things. It essentially acts a lot like hot glue, but it comes out of a bottle. You don't need a glue gun or anything like that. So it's really nice. It dries very quickly. Uh, it doesn't really have water in it, so it doesn't make things like wrinkly or weird if you're gluing paper. So that's why I really like uh, Fabrifix. <laughs> And then I've got some polymer clay. So this is what I made that little mushroom out of. So remember this guy. So I have polymer clay. I have it in two colors. I have white and red, uh, which will be perfect for making a little whimsical mushroom. And this comes in a couple brands. So this one is called Sculpey. Is this brand, the name's kind of worn off of the package here. And then there's another brand, Fimo. There's a few other brands, but essentially it's a clay that is made from polymer, kind of like a plastic. Uh, so it's not made from earth, like a normal clay would be, comes out of the ground. Um, the benefit of that is that this doesn't dry out until you bake it. It doesn't set up until you bake it. And you can actually even boil it to harden it. So it's kind of waterproof that way. So if you were sculpting something and it had plastic in your sculpture, you couldn't put that in the oven because the plastic would melt. So you could just put the whole thing in a pot of boiling water and actually cook it that way. So that's kind of like a hack, a Sculpey hack. Um, but it's, it's a really cool product. People make all sorts of fun things out of that, different types of beads, different sculptures. Um, if you're ever interested, just do an internet search for polymer clay art, polymer clay beads, things like that and you'll just see some phenomenal stuff that people make out of this. So you could, you know, just sculpt it out of one color and paint it, but I like to sculpt it out of different colors. They sell all sorts of colors, so if you need something red, sculpt it out of red clay. If you need a white piece, sculpt it out of white clay, things like that. So I do have a scrap of cardboard here. I just like to use that as my little paint palette, um, just some scraps laying around. And then I've got a couple types of moss. Uh, just to show you, you know, so you could use this moss and glue it onto like the edge of your door or something like that. Moss is super effective in uh, making a fairy garden. So that's going to be your key. And they sell this by the bag at the craft store, usually in the floral section. So, and I just wanted to show you, there's a couple different kinds. So this one, you can see it has like a, a different texture than one like this, which is actually a little more um, stringy. So a couple different kinds there. So sometimes I like to have that contrast, you know, of like a light green on a dark green, sort of why I have these two greens here, um, just because it helps add dimension to, to what you're creating. Okay, so those are all the supplies that we're gonna use today. And first I'm gonna just start simple. We're gonna make this door here. Okay, so this door is actually three popsicle sticks of these larger kind. And then on the back, you can see that there's one that I cut um, and just glued across. Okay, so we'll probably start with that step. So I've got an extra one here. We'll line up the three that I want. And we'll cut this. I will just want to make sure that it covers across three of them. So maybe I will center this. Let's kind of zoom in on what I'm doing here. Okay. So the nice thing about these is that you can usually cut them uh, with scissors. There we go. And then you could probably get away with just one, but maybe I'll do two. 
and I'll use this one to measure so I could see that it fits across the three of them just so. I have a little extra piece too that I can save. Now if you wanted to stain these sticks ahead of time to make them this color, you could definitely do that. So I'm just going to glue these across the back here like that. So we'll get our fabric fix. Just going to make a squiggle of glue. You can see it makes strings. There's a glue string here, so kind of similar, like I said, to hot glue. And then I'm going to press that down. Make sure they're all lined up the way I want them. Okay, a little glue might come out of the edges. That's fine. We'll do the same here. Just a bead of glue. And so this is really the part that you wouldn't see. Okay, so I pressed it down. We're going to let that sit a minute and dry. And we'll be back. Okay, so this has been drying for a few minutes. Like I said, Fabri-Tac and Fabri-Fix, this glue tends to dry pretty quickly. Um, so, you know, you can just give it a wiggle. It feels pretty sturdy. It's probably not all the way dry but we'll just kind of roll with it and see how it goes. So you can see here with this door, it has a flat bottom and a rounded top. So to achieve that, we're just gonna cut straight across the bottom. This is where you're really gonna test your, your glue here and I'm gonna kind of hold it together as I do that. Okay, we'll make sure we're all still in place. So you can see on this side now we've got a flat bottom across the bottom there. Okay, and now for the rounded top, you could kind of eyeball this, you could do a different shape if you wanted, you could do a point, you know, like this, uh, this other door, which we'll get to next. So let's see about rounding it off here. Well, it's not exactly round, but I think that's a pretty good, pretty good start. Plus, fairy craftsmanship, you know, kind of varies. So it has a little bit of like a rustic look to it, which is kind of nice. You know, so you want to make sure that glue is good and dry. You can just cut right through it with a, a good heavy duty kind of pair of scissors here. And that is really that. Now this one, like I said, I colored it with a distress ink. And it comes in a little ink pad like this. And you could just, you know, rub it right on here. Like right from the ink pad. And you can see how it's starting to color it there. Like that. You can spread it around with your fingers a little bit. You could probably dip a brush into the inks. So let's do that. And brush it on to get some more color. Or like I said, you could do the sticks ahead of time and get those with some ink on them too. Okay, and now for the doorknob, this is actually, and you can see on the side, uh, there is a hole in it because it's actually a wooden bead and I didn't have any more of these on hand. But it's just a wooden bead that I inked uh, with that brown ink also and then just glued on. So then it just looks like a little doorknob. And I thought that was pretty effective. So that is how you make one of these. It's really just slats of wood and then on the back or on the front you have a piece going across the other direction to hold it all together. Okay. So pretty simple. If you wanted to decorate this you could paint a little green moss on it. You could actually glue some moss onto it and things like that. Um, different shapes you can make. You can make this bigger or smaller. Things like that. So now this one is a variation on a theme. This is very similar. So you can see this one is actually made up of these stir sticks. Okay. And then they're held together with this is actually just a normal popsicle stick and then another wooden bead here. 
Okay, so let's make that one. So we're going to lay out some of these nice and flat and try to line up the bottoms too. That one's a little too curvy. So you want to weed some out if they don't seem like they're going to behave the way you want them. We can always trim these up as well. So let's do a few more. Okay. Try to line up the bottoms. We've got, you know, a line in my cutting mat here, which is always nice to use. Okay, I like that. And then now it has a stick straight across it, and these have flat edges. So I'm going to start by removing a round edge off of this stick here. Okay, and that just went flying somewhere, so watch out for that. Uh, be careful when you're cutting wood, you know, you might want to protect your eyes or goggles or something like that, just because you can launch little pieces. Okay. So I'm going to put this, hold it over the top here, so I can see how much glue I actually need to put, how far out on the stick. So it looks like that should cover all of them. So I'm going to turn this over, and on my sample here, it's about maybe half of an inch, three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. So I'll just try to replicate that. Now we can line them up a little better, and I'm going to press this popsicle stick down. Okay, so now we are gluing all these pieces together. And then up here, we'll want to make sure that they're looking pretty straight. There's going to be gaps, it's going to be a little crooked again. That fairy craftsmanship, you know, can be a little wonky sometimes. So you want to make sure that we let this dry. So we will be back in just a minute. All right, so now this is pretty close to being dry. Um, you can see when I pick this up, they're all held together, so that's a good sign. I am going to still support it, though, with my fingers behind it, so I'm holding all those on there. And I'm going to trim this popsicle stick and get rid of the extra. So I'm going to try to get it close. See, it's got a little bent out of shape, so we're going to lay it back down, put them back where we want them, and press that down as the glue continues to dry. And then I actually want to use that piece of popsicle stick, I think, if it's long enough. So I am going to go try to find it since it flew off in that direction, and I will be right back. All right, so I do have this other piece here. And that is what I'm going to lay across here, and that one's going to get glued down as well. Now it looks like it's just about the right length if I take that rounded bit off, which is good because I didn't want it. So I'm just going to take that very uh, little edge off here to make it flat. I will mention too, and I probably could have done this before, is um, you know if I'm measuring this out, you could just make a line on here with a pencil where you need to cut it and cut it ahead of time. You know, and that's going to be a lot easier than trying to cut it while it's glued together. So that is a lesson I have learned. Like now this piece is already cut to size. It's going to be easy to glue on and not really have to futz with until it's uh, all the way dry. So we will just run some glue along this. From one end to the other. Make sure I cap my glue. and then press that down. We'll make sure these are all nicey-nicey the way we want them. And since these stir sticks are a little bendy, they get a little wonky like as they go up, um, but we're gonna trim some of that off as well. All 
All right, so you can see we're kind of building uh, this door here, and it's looking pretty good. On the other side, it just looks like they're all held together. Sometimes the glue will seep through to this side. Uh, it's not a not a big deal. You really aren't going to see it. It depends on how you paint this too. All right, so we'll let that continue to dry. And now for this one, I actually have this interesting piece that goes across like this, okay? I'm gonna show you how we made that. So again, another popsicle stick, and I am gonna zoom in here, if you pardon me. Okay. And so I want it to go where this edge of the stick is hitting that corner at the bottom there and then this right side of the stick is hitting this corner here okay and so I am going to draw a line and I'm gonna actually scooch this towards me real quick so I can see what I'm doing and I'll show you what I mean so now you can see these two pencil lines here so I'm just following this line here straight across and drew a line and then this line here straight across and drew a line there so those are where I'm going to cut it. Okay, so let's do that. And I made it just the littlest bit smaller than I think I need, just to make sure it fits in there. And if there's a gap, it's not a big deal. Okay. Trim a little bit of that off. So let's see how that fits there. They are pretty good. Scoot it over a little. There we go. So very similar to what we have going on here. It creates a Z shape to hold the door together. Um, you know, and you can do this different styles, different shapes and things like that. So then this is another one. We will glue down and it will make our door extra strong. Again, we'll just run a bead of glue. So you're probably sensing a theme here. You know, you can essentially, almost like Legos, it's like using these pieces of wood, stir sticks, popsicle sticks, toothpicks, things like that, and just let your imagination just go. You can build furniture, you could build benches, you could build tables, stools, you know, like all sorts of things. Let's see, maybe I didn't put enough glue on that one. We'll add a little bit extra. There we go. Okay, so we are getting there with this one. Let me just back out a little. All right, so now if you wanted to leave the bottom kind of crookedy, you could if you wanted to come in and trim it up a little bit. You could just come straight across. You could do this over a trash can if you wanted. But see, that made kind of a nice uh, clean edge there uh, pretty quickly, made some short work of it. These stir sticks are easier to cut through because they're thinner. Okay, now if you wanted to do a door similar to this one. Uh, you kind of find the middle and that's where it's going to come to a point. So if I count these, I have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, three, four, five, so right around here, this um, space in between these two is my middle. So if I want to come to a point, I'll just maybe start a little ways up here. Okay. and kind of just cut towards that. Okay, so like that. And then you'll do the opposite on the way back down. So I know I was up a little, like about this much here. So I'm gonna aim for that same space on the other side. And I've kind of rounded it a little bit 
And again, I'm supporting it underneath, you know, I'm holding this together. And you can see what I did here is I actually cut this one straighter and this one a little more rounded. So you could go back in and fix that. I could cut this one a little straighter if I wanted to, just to kind of make them look a little more even. There we go. All right, so that is pretty much it for a door like this. Again, this is just a wooden bead. You can see the hole there that is painted. We'll do a little paint job on it quick. I've got a lot of uh, wood scraps here that I'm starting to collect. But you know, these are things you want to keep because you can make all sorts of stuff out of those. Okay, so we'll use my little palette. We'll get some brown paint. We'll get my paintbrush. And we'll just paint this. And you know, if you don't use a lot of paint, it'll just kind of stain the wood a little bit and you can see some of it through it, which is kind of nice. Or you could just leave this, you know, wood colored, like the natural color. But I wanted to darken it up a little bit. There's also a technique called dry brushing where you have very little paint on your brush, kind of like this, and you just go over it a little bit just to add a little bit like that. I'm going to add a little bit more because I want it to just have a nice rich brown color. Try to get in there. And you can spend a little bit more time with this than what I'm doing. Okay. And now if you want to fancy it up, what you can do is I like to start with a darker green. Put a little bit of that on my palette here. And make sure you shake these, I did ahead of time. And I've got a finer brush here. And you can go around the bottom and the edges. Like maybe there's a little bit of grass growing up this. You see that? Maybe it's a little bit of moss or something like that. So I like to go up sort of like on the seams here a little bit. So it looks like it's creeping up the door. All right, look how effective that is already. You can do that. You can sort of get maybe in a little, the little cracks here, like it's sneaking in. Like it's starting to hang down. So I kind of like that where it's creeping up from the bottom, but then also hanging down from the top. So I'll put a few kind of hangers here. There's another one. Okay, you get the idea. All right, now if you want to create a little bit more dimension, I'm just getting extra paint off my brush here. We're going to use some lighter green. Well, that one needs to get shaken. You can tell because just the clear part came out. I'm going to take a little bit of that lighter green and just add a little bit on top of where we were. See that? And now it creates sort of like a highlight and a shadow. So the darker green is kind of like a shadow in the background and the lighter green is kind of like a highlight or a little brighter spot in the foreground there. And this is looking pretty rustic, which is exactly what I wanted, okay? All right, 
Now again, I'm gonna get just some extra paint off my brush. And then on this one, you can see I put some little flowers in there, like they're just growing in that green area on the door. So you could use some yellow. We'll shake that up. And you don't need very much. So we're just making little dots here. Okay. And then the pink. That one's a little runny, so I wanna watch out for that. And then I'll get all my paint out of the way. Pretty much done with that. All right, so now this paintbrush, you know, it's thin, but it's maybe not as thin as I want. So, you know, I've got all these toothpicks and things here, so let's try one of these. So we'll dip it in a little bit of yellow. We'll just make some spots of different sizes there, and I'm sorry, you probably couldn't see that very well. There we go. Let's try that again. This looks like something's growing, growing in that green area there. And if you want it to look a little bit more like flowers, you can kind of make more of a shape. So maybe I'll pull this out in a few directions. So it's kind of like a little, little star shape or something like that. Okay, and then we'll, maybe I'll just get a new one of these. I've got a ton of them. We'll do the same with some pink. All right, now if this isn't like screaming whimsy at you, I'm not sure what would. So this is, uh, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. I think I almost like this one better than my, my sample, which is much darker. And I kind of like this a little bit more lighter and vibrant. I think I used lighter greens and I didn't put as much brown paint on it. So it's just missing a doorknob. So maybe at some point I'll just break this one off and glue it onto this one or something like that. But that's how you make the style of door. So now I've got two kinds. This one's a little more advanced. This one's a little more simple, but they both essentially use the same technique to be held together. All right. Now we'll move on. Let's clear some of this out of the way. Two fences. Um, and these are really, 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 really basic. Uh, you can just see by their construction, it's essentially the same way that we put a, uh, a door together, but um, just really like spaced out. Okay. So these ones I've used these pop, or not popsicle, these toothpicks for that have a pointy end and a round end. And you could use either end, you know, if you wanted to have a round top, kind of like, uh, you know, fences that you see nowadays, you could do that. What you could do too, is let's take maybe a few of these and we'll put two off to the side. Let me zoom in on what I'm doing here. Move these out of the way. All right, so we've got two off to the side here. These other ones, I want to cut to the same length and take the pointy part off the bottom. So I'm going to shorten them up a little bit. And now your fence can be jaunty. I mean, these don't have to be the same length if you want kind of like a weird fence or something like that. So I'm going to cut these all like on this same line here. Okay. Again, mind your flying wood. Okay. And now you can space these out how you want them. And then I'm going to have these two as my last two sort of outside pieces. So I could use the mat here too and space them out like, oh, they're half inch apart, you know, or something like that. But I think I want them a little closer together. 
looks a little bit more like a fence. Again, you could stain these ahead of time or paint them ahead of time if you wanted to. Okay, and then these are going to be held together with one of these stir sticks going across it like that. And actually, I can go ahead and measure that. I like having a little bit extra sticking out on either side. I just think it looks fun. Okay, and I'll do another one that same length. Alright, so now this one here, I did the crossbars kind of straight across. On this one though, you can see that one's crooked. Well, actually they're both crooked. So that one's a little jauntier, a little more fun. So it depends on what you want to do. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to go straight across. I'm going to hold these down. I'm going to put just a dot of glue kind of at the same height on all these. You could put the glue on this, um, but it might be too much and stick out over the edges or in between them. All right, so I'm going to press that down and then that's your time to adjust them to how you want them. Okay, so we'll give a little firm pressure there. Watch out for your glue strings. You can see I had strings stuck to it. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing a little bit lower. So I'm gonna hold these down. So I put little dots of glue along them. Okay. And then we'll press that down. And again, that's when you're going to want to move these around. Make sure they're where you want them. Leave some crooked if you want on purpose. All right, and that is pretty much it to making fences. And now what I did, though, that I didn't do on my samples is these two on the outside are long. I can actually stake that in the ground so I can stick that and stick it in the ground and it'll hold the fence up. So it's got two little stakes there at the bottom. You can see that glue worked pretty quickly. It's already holding this together pretty well. And you could go in and paint this. You could figure out which way you want it, you know, and then you could start to build a little perimeter around your fairy garden. You can make a little gate, you know, that's maybe open or broken on its hinges or something like that. So that is how you make fences. And then real quick, a little crash course with the polymer clay. Okay, so this mushroom here I made with some of the white. So we're going to open this up. I'll back out here a little bit. Okay, so I just broke off a chunk. You do have to knead it a little bit. Some polymer clay is harder than others. Some is softer. This one's pretty soft, and you can see it actually um, keeps... Let me focus on that my fingerprints in it, which I don't really appreciate. So, and also if your hands are dirty, you'll be getting like dirt in this too, which I think mine are. Um, but you know, if this is going to go in a garden or something somewhere, maybe it doesn't matter so much. And what you can do if this is um, getting too many like fingerprints or has a texture on it you don't like, you can press something into it to change its texture. So like say a toothbrush, if you have an old toothbrush that you don't use anymore, you can press the bristles into it and it'll give it kind of like a, a different texture. Okay, so I'm going to make kind of a stalk here. I think they look kind of better if they curve a little bit. Okay, so you can see that. Just sort of like a peanut shape almost. I'm going to make sure it's flat by pressing it down into the table because I want it to be able to stand. Okay. And then I'm going to take the red and get some of this out. And then we'll soften that up by kneading it. 
the red actually the pigment in it will turn your fingers a little red just so you know and you might transfer some red onto the white clay if you've been handling this and you go back and touch that okay but we're going to want to make the cap okay so i'm just sort of i have a rough circle it's kind of thicker in the middle and that's pretty much what you want um, pull it out towards the edges to make it a little thinner you can make this really whatever shape you know i'm going to smooth out the edge just with my finger by rubbing it kind of gingerly okay so now i want to attach these two pieces so i'm actually going to kind of just <laughs> squish it together and do the old squish technique and then I like to sort of blend these edges with something round. So here I've got like the, the bottom of my paintbrush. And I'm just going to press up into the white and kind of mash it into the red there. Just to kind of help fuse these pieces. Now if these don't fuse together and they come apart, you can always just glue them together after they've baked. And these don't take very long. It's pretty low heat. Uh, in your oven. If you're doing a lot of this, you might want to get a dedicated oven. I have a um, a toaster oven. That was one that I stopped using when I got a new one, but I kept it because I use it for baking polymer clay and things like that that I don't want to do in the oven that I eat food in. Um, however, if you're not doing much of this, I don't think it should be an issue. Okay. Now we've got our basic kind of mushroom shape, and now you can thin this out, you can bend it, curve it, however you want. Um, and then to make the spots on top, that's just little bits of the white clay here. So I've got just a little bit, I'm just going to break off some, roll it into a ball. Okay, so you can see I've got that little ball there. And then I'll just press it and press it down. You can do that different sizes. So, you know, if you have a bigger uh, piece here, you put it on top and you flatten it out, it's going to make a bigger spot. We'll do two more. There. So now we've got a fun little mushroom. You didn't have to buy a miniature. These packs of Sculpey are maybe like 2 or $3. You know, you can always use your craft store coupons. They send them out all the time. And then just make sure, you know, it has a flat bottom. It's like the shape you want it, that it's going to stand uh, before you bake it. And you just bake it according to the instructions on the package. All right, so let's get all of our fun stuff together here. See what we made today. Look at that. And uh, again, this is, you know, <laughs> really just only limited by your imagination. You know, there's a ton of things you can make this way. It's extraordinarily cheap. It's literally a couple bucks. Um, you know, if you want to get some of the more bells and whistles like the moss, the acrylic paint, and things like that. Um, you definitely can as a way to just add more embellishment to it, but it's not necessary. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you really enjoyed this one. Sorry it went on a little longer than I planned, but there are a lot of uh, hopefully little goodies in here and little um, ideas that you're going to take with you. If you make any of these, I would love to see them. So please check out our Facebook group. Uh, it is called Crafting Community, and it's a group that's part of the Dream Bank Madison Facebook page. Uh, that's where I'll be posting all of these tutorials and videos. If you try this, I would love to see it. That's a great place to share it with us. So again, thank you so much for being here, and we will see you.